Hi, David Mould here, welcoming you to the second of two telecasts done with Ian Boyne on his programme Religious Hard Talk in November of 2005. The first, which was entitled I'm at Home in the Ghetto, on that one we took a look at our work in the inner city, Kingston's inner city. And on this one we're going to be talking about the role of the Roman Catholic Church in the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln. Now we're not dealing with all the facts of the assassination, just a brief overview. Uh, I felt that we needed to talk about this as we spoke about the role of the Roman Catholic Church in Jamaica and I felt it was necessary that some of the hidden history come out. And I'm really not ashamed that we did this. It's very controversial and quite frankly I know it could lead to my death because these boys don't play clean. They play dirty. But it doesn't matter. What's important to me is that God's truth comes out and that a context be given for understanding the final invitation in the entire Bible found in Revelation 18. Come out of her my people. Sit back. I hope um, the things said will have been said in a manner that um, encourages you to listen and study for yourself. We'll let Ian take us into the program. Thanks for joining us for Religious Hard Talk. I'm Ian Boyne. For many years, the Roman Catholic Church has been subject to very harsh criticisms from fundamentalist sectarians. There have been a number of groups, such as the Jehovah's Witnesses and the Seventh-day Adventists, who have really strongly criticized the Roman Catholic Church, identifying it as the Antichrist power, and raising the specter of a future persecution of true Christians by Roman Catholics. Today we have with us uh, one of the strongest, most forthright and forceful anti-Catholic spokespersons, David Mole, the founder of the Layman for Religious Liberty, is a Seventh-day Adventist layman. In the early 1990s, he had a series of meetings in Jamaica which uh, created quite a, a stir. There were a number of revelations that he made in these seminars about the Roman Catholic Church. Well, today on Religious Hard Talk, we will give him the opportunity to make his charges against the Roman Catholic Church, to make his critique against the Roman Catholic Church. But we have with us the well-known Roman Catholic deacon and defender of the faith, Peter Espute. On Religious Hard Talk, we present all the sides. We give people the opportunity to express their views, express their views strongly, but also to have the opportunity to have those views countered. And what we will do today is that we'll have David Mole make an initial eight-minute presentation. He feels he has facts that the Roman Catholic Church was behind the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. He's, he's going to make that case, and we give him the opportunity to do so now. Gentlemen, good to have you on Religious Hard Talk. David, we start with you the case last week you did not flinch when I asked you whether you were suggesting that the Roman Catholic Church was the epitome of evil and you said vehemently yes the Roman Catholic Church is the epitome of evil your case it's not my case it's a case that was first made by one of the nine men that sat on the military tribunal that executed the conspirators in the Lincoln assassination, Brigadier General Thomas Harris. He wrote two books on the subject. There have been others written, one by a former Roman Catholic priest, which concurs. But before we get off on that, I feel the need to apologize here, to apologize for taking so long on your program last week to develop the thought that when I speak about Catholicism, I speak about its history, I speak about its dogma or doctrine, and not necessarily about its people or personalities. I do believe that there are genuine Christians in all denominations, including the Roman Catholic Church, people who love humanity, who would give their lives for humanity. However, on the matter of the traditional dogma of the church and its bloody history, 
that any student who took the time to look at the 1500 year period beginning from the from Justinian's lifting of the Bishop of Rome to being the head of the church to 1798 when Napoleon took the Pope captive. Um, anybody who spans that history and looks at the estimated 100 million heretics that were slain by the Roman Catholic Church has to conclude that there is something fundamentally and diabolically wrong with that institution. Mm -hmm. When I said it was the epitome of evil, I meant it. Mm -hmm. I also ought to state that I will not be able to develop all the thoughts on your program and I'm prepared to launch our telecast again in Jamaica and begin with the first maybe seven or eight programs, if TVJ would have it, to allow me to develop the points that we have thrown out here. Okay? Um, and I ought to say one other point. I never started out. You've defined me as an anti-Catholic. If I'm an anti-Catholic, then so is Paul. So is Jesus, who authored the prophecies in the book of Revelation. You know, um, I don't see myself that way. I see myself first as a Christian. There are some harsh things in the word of God. And most of us, I think, tend to either are either ignorant of those statements or we shy away from them. And I believe that they need to be dealt with openly. And the church of which I'm a part used to stand firmly on these positions. I think, unfortunately, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has reached a point now where we're so interested in being part of the mainstream and being perceived as not as a cult mm -hmm. that we have downplayed this teaching. And by the way, it's not unique to the Seventh-day Adventist Church. As I said to you last week, the church fathers could prove to a man that the prophecies of Daniel pointed to Roman Catholicism. Mm -hmm. I have several statements here. I don't think there will be time to even touch on maybe more than one, if I may, go to um, Tertullian in his answer to the Jews, says, Babylon in our own jam is a figure of the city Rome as being equally great and proud of her sway and triumphant over the saints. Victorinus, who wrote in the earliest commentary of the Apocalypse extant, says on Revelation 17, the seven heads are seven hills on which the woman sitteth, that is to say, the city of Rome. So you have people 14, 1500 years before there was a Seventh-day Adventist church. The, the only thing in the city no. of Rome is you're the Roman finish. Catholic church. You're gonna finish his, they, his they, Who made the point that mm. the Bible an understanding of Daniel 7, Revelation 13 and 17 points clearly. And as I said, I do not have time to develop that here. I will. Now to Lincoln. President Lincoln's assassination. One would first have to go to motive before one goes to the facts. And I think it is clear to say Lincoln's contemporary, Pius the, Pope Pius IX, uh, put forth a list of what he called a syllabus of errors and re-emphasized the church's antipathy or hatred for the foundation principles of the United States of America. Freedom of the press was anathema. Freedom of speech was anathema. What you had happening was this upstart country, the United States of America, emerging admittedly at a time when Rome had received a wound, but emerging and Rome felt it necessary to condemn the principles, separation of church and state. I mean, I can quote you Pius IX repeatedly, and I will do that in subsequent programs so that people can understand. And indeed, millions of Roman Catholics are members of that church who don't have a clue about the principles that Rome espouses. All right, so the motive, President Lincoln was simply the president of the country which most flew in the face of established dogma or established teaching. In, if you were to boil it down to its bare essentials, I would say this. Roman Catholicism believes in the union of church and state. The United States Constitution believes in just the opposite. It states Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. That's the first amendment to the Constitution of the United States. Rome says join, and not only join, but Rome says we have the authority to use force to compel the conscience. 
Pius reiterated that in his syllabus of errors. The United States took the position that based on the lessons of history, wherever you have a union of church and state, and by the way, which is why we ought to be very careful about any movement in our country about placing political power in the hands exclusively of Christians. I'm not, I may not have said that correctly, but if history teaches us any lesson, it is that where the church gains political control, blood inevitably flows. That, unfortunately, is the sad 1,500-year history of Roman Catholicism. The facts about President Lincoln are this. Lincoln developed a, defended a former Roman Catholic priest by the name of Charles Chiniqui in the 1850s. I mentioned that last week. Chiniqui broke away from the Roman Catholic Church. The Catholic bishop spread a lot of lies about Chiniqui. Uh, one of them included rape. And Lincoln defended him the night before the verdict was read. Somebody's conscience bothered them in Chicago. They came to Urbana, Illinois, and confessed that the whole thing had been a scam by the bishop. Lincoln is, it, it, and it's recorded in Chiniqui's book. And by the way, why aren't these books available to us today? I see one of them. Why can't we read? Rome's responsibility. Uh, ro no, this book was written by Brigadier General Thomas Harris, but believe it or not, his bigger work is actually much more thrilling to me. You know, his major work goes into so many things. Um, it is a known fact, if you go to Surratt House today in Maryland, this is the boarding house. The, the, the United States government traced the plot to the boarding house of the Surratt. It was a Catholic boarding house. In fact, where's the original wanted poster? Let me show. Um, when we come back, when we come back from the break, Rome's responsibility for the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Did the Roman Catholics kill Abraham Lincoln? The longtime critic of Roman Catholicism, David Maul, faces Roman Catholic deacon and defender of the faith, Peter Espio. This is a religious hard talk not to be missed. We'll be back after our first break. Welcome back to Religious Hard Talk, the fiery critic of Roman Catholicism, David Mould, founder of the Laymen for Religious Liberty, continues his case against Catholicism. All right. On the matter of President Lincoln, we need to understand one concept further, and that is the concept of counter-reformation, to undo the things accomplished by the Reformation. Now, unfortunately, most people don't even know Old Testament history and can mark out the defining points in the history of, of the Jews, let's say, and the creation of man and so forth. But there is just tremendous gap in knowledge from the point at which Christ ascended to the point at which he's to come. You know, let's say 2,000 years have gone, and most people don't even have a concept of what the Protestant Reformation was, you know, and it's unfortunate. But going back to Lincoln, President Lincoln, it was on most of the eight people were tried, okay? Four of them were hung by the United States government. If you go to the original wanted poster, issued within days of Lincoln's assassination, there it is, yeah, all right? Yeah. You will see there are three people. David Herald, who gave himself up. John Wilkes Booth was killed. The third man, John Surratt. Let's take the case of John Surratt. Uh -huh. John Surratt fled, and he was educated by the Jesuits, okay? Oh, uh -huh. Okay, all right, as was Fidel Castro. And we can get into that at a later time, mm -hmm. as to who really is running the show in Cuba and why, okay, or who brought him to power, okay? But let's stick with Lincoln. Yes. Abraham Lincoln's conspirators, or the conspirators in his assassination, four were hung. Four went into prison in what they call the dry tortugas in Florida. Mm -hmm. Surratt was traced by the State Department from the Ford's Theater to Burlington, Vermont, at Burlington, Vermont, he took a ferry over to Montreal. Bear in mind, this is the man. All of America is looking for these three that you see on the wanted poster. Surratt is met by two Roman Catholic priests, and this is... is it documented? This is documented American history. Mm -hmm. It should be taught in every schoolroom. Rome has succeeded in hushing it up. It. If you go to Harris's major work, yes. you will find all the details. And again, this is not some fly-by-night historian. Oh. This is one of the nine men... This wanted man is met by his Roman Catholic... Met by two Roman Catholic priests, priests. Father Boucher uh -huh. and Lapierre. 
Uh -huh. One was the cannon to the bishop of Montreal. Yes. They hid him for five months in Montreal while oh. all America looked for him. Is that hid him within a stone's throw of the bishop's house, American history. Okay? Uh -huh. Five months later, they disguised him and put him aboard a steamer called the Peruvian, uh -huh. headed for Britain. Uh -huh. He got off in Liverpool. He went to the Oratory of the Holy Cross, which was a Roman Catholic boarding house where he was sheltered. The State Department lost track of him there. When they picked up his trail, he was in Rome, the little okay. village of Velitieri. He was, in fact, in fact, I have a picture here of John Surratt in the uniform of the Pope's personal bodyguard. You have that? Yes, I do. When caught by the State Department, mm -hmm. here is John Surratt, and by the way, his boast, his boast, yeah. but here is Surratt. This was his boast on board the Peruvian. Let's give a, give a close up to this. We oh, killed, this is the man. This is the man. We killed Lincoln, the nigger's friend. That was the boast, and all of this that I'm telling you. If you want the, tr you know, good reading, the transcript of the trial of John Surratt. Uh -huh. O.J. Simpson's trial is rubbish in comparison. Computers. All right? Peter Spute, how do you respond to these alleged atrocities by your church? <clears throat> Well, you have me at a disadvantage. Yes, because you have not Because this is the this. first time I'm hearing your privilege. I'm, I'm hearing this, and if you really wanted a fair debate, mm -hmm. then you would acquaint me of these matters beforehand, so that I can read about them. I mean, this is the but first this time would I'm take hearing all of no, this. A number, but, you'd have to. But I mean, I I am not even sure that a case has been proven against the church. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and people do this all the time. There are renegade Roman Catholic priests um, that the church is not happy with. I remember when the Holy Father went to um, the Sandinistas, Sandinista government in Nicaragua. Nicaragua, and the ministers, the cabinet ministers were in the line. And when he came to a Catholic priest who was the minister of education, all of the others he allowed to kiss his ring, but he would not let the priest. And he wagged his finger at him in a photograph that has become world famous. It is said that a Catholic priest was killed along with che, che Guevara in the hills of Bolivia. Um, so just to say that a Catholic priest was associated with a, a murderer. It's not to discredit does, the church. It's not to discredit the church. And I think the argument tries to go too far. Also, in the earlier um, claim that Justinian was identifying the Antichrist with the Pope, when you listen to actually what the gentleman said, he was referring to Rome. Now, Rome and the Catholic Church are not to be identified. At that time in history, when the great persecution of Christians was being done by the Roman emperors. In, uh, f famous among them being um, Nero, Nero, for example, who, who, who was said to have a bloodlust. Um, certainly the, the, the um, book of Revelation, mm -hmm. which is talking about the Antichrist, in fact he is named the 666. Um, is uh, an example of what is called gematria in um, numerology where each letter of the person's name mm -hmm. is, I I you, you put the numbers that are equivalent to that and when you add them up you get a number. So for example on the, the walls of the city of uh, Vesuvius, uh, of, of, sorry of Pompeii which was buried by the volcano Vesuvius when the archaeologists have dug they find on the wall 246 loves 389 um, because that's how it was done. People took their names and substituted the numbers and added them up. And indeed, um, 666 is the number of a man. And the man is Antiochus Epiphanes IV, who is the, the, was the current Roman emperor at the time. And um, th that, that there's no prophecy in that. That is a, a straight mathematical calculation. Um, the, 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 so so to, to find in um, Tertullian and others an identification of Rome with 
the beast is not at all to mean the Roman Catholic Church. That's a very naive understanding of the word Rome. Rome there was political Rome. Was refers to the Roman Empire, okay. to the Rome. emperor who is killing Christians. And therefore, to Christians, this man is a bloody murderer. He's, an, he's the Antichrist. So to turn around now and say that Tertullian, by identifying Rome, meaning the church, is, 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 he, he has come to his conclusion before he read his argument. And as soon as he sees the word Rome, he says, aha, the Catholic Church is in Rome. So once I see the word Rome, it means Catholic Church. Nonsense. And, and really, I wish, you know, if it is the truth we are after, let us argue honestly. And uh, there is nothing, Tertullian is a father in the, of the church in good standing. Tertullian, how would Tertullian, who had the greatest respect good, good for person. the Holy Father, would, yeah. would ever claim that the headquarters of the church? Mind you, the Catholic Church headquarters was not always in Rome. I'm not even sure at the time of Tertullian it was in Rome. Um, <coughs> the, 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 you know, Peter, our first um, pontiff, was not based in Rome. He was based in Jerusalem. And really it was when the Roman emperor, whose name was, everybody knows his name, he's accused of all sorts of things, Constantine. When Constant Constantine, um, when he declared that in his empire, Sunday would be a public holiday, meaning there would be no work when he became a Christian. This was his contribution. Then people turn around and say that Constantine changed from Saturday to Sunday. An utterly ridiculous um, assertion. Constantine simply made what was already the case that Christians worshipped on Sunday. Um, Constantine simply made it a public holiday, a civil public holiday. But it was when Constantine converted and became Christian that um, he invited the uh, head of, head of the, the patriarchs, the, the patriarch of the church, to, to move to, to Rome. And Rome then became the headquarters of the, the Christian church. I say Christian church because there was no other. As you may know, Ian, the Adventist church is a rather just a come church. A late comer. A late comer. And, um, you know, I, I, I wonder how it would claim to be founded by Jesus if, 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 it, if it is only founded 150 odd years ago. So, um, but, but, but certainly this, but is, what about this is part of the difficulty with is Short you that churches. this is not just a matter um, <coughs> you referred to individual priests er erring, but uh, David Moore made the point that your theology, yes. your theology drives certain atrocities yes, he, because you are so opposed to the separation of church and state because you believe in a theocracy. I'm then you, sure you, you are a threat. I'm to not religious sure liberty. that he's right. Address to that. I, I have never heard before today yeah. that the Catholic Church is not acquainted with the syllabus church, of errors to which he referred. Church, church of state, but again. You know, the syllabus of errors, the, the, there is a historical context. You can't ahistoricize uh, uh, the syllabus of errors. Mm -hmm. Now, to say that the church may have been against the alliance between church and state in the um, 15th century or the 16th century is not the same thing as saying that it is so in the 20th century. I would say today the Catholic Church would be as against an alliance between church and state as anybody else. I think the church today takes umbrage at, at um, politicians who wish to give permission for the naming of bishops. That is what the alliance of church and state meant, you know. It meant that the king or whoever it was could name the bishop of this place or that place. And the church, you know, was it really that the church wanted the alliance between church and state, or was it that the state wanted to co-op the church? Mm -hmm. you but know, you are saying, David, <coughs> that the... And, and the I am saying that today, I don't know that, that the Catholic change. Church anywhere, I don't know, for example, that the Catholic Church in Jamaica wants an alliance between church and state. Mm -hmm. I have never but heard, that, I've never heard any such thing. The and theology has not changed. I'd like, I'd like to take you to the bull unum sanctum, what is stated and what is implied. But before doing that... What year is that bull? The, the bull, it, it was promulgated November 18, 1302, Pope Boniface VIII, which other popes have built upon, including Pius IX. But if I might just make the point, 
I told you where John Surratt was caught. Yes. Secretary of State Seward, uh -huh. if I may continue with the yes, story. Yes, continue Even though there was no extradition treaty between the Vatican or, 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 or the Roman Catholic Church, we, but, let's say, well, and I the have United to stop States. Him here. We, we, I have to stop. Well. He said a while ago he turned up in Rome, a little village named, named what? Velitere. The photograph shows yes. him. Velitere. In is it in Rome or in a village called Velitere? No, but you're, no, you're, no, you're no, no, Ian. Years, no, 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 you see, that, that sounded no, 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 no. against the ropes no, he's, and he's, he's again, oh. he's trying to say that no, but by saying that matters. he's in Rome, he's suggesting he that... He was under the auspices right? of the Roman Catholic Church. But what he was saying. not he, within with the papal states. He was, right? he was in No, to say that he's in the uniform of a, what is called a Swiss guard. Yeah. Okay? Does, 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 you don't think that if this person was a... A, 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 a passero of the Pope that yeah. the Pope could do better for him than giving him the job of, of, a, <laughs> of, a, of, a, of a, a, a security guard. No, no I mean to say, no, I am not don't. really, you know, this, this actually boggles the mind that someone would honestly say that the Pope sends somebody to Ford's theater to kill President Lincoln, well, transports him across the Atlantic and gives him a job as a security guard on the front gate. You know, it, 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 it is so ridiculous that I, I'm not even sure you would want him to continue with what he's saying. <laughs> you would like you would me not to continue. No. Please continue. I want I'm, to to say I, I'm interested I'm to hear. You're interested to hear. Yeah, because I've never heard it before. David Moore will continue making his case for the view that the Roman Catholic Church was behind the assassination of Abraham Lincoln. Religious hard talk tackles these hard issues. We're going to be back for more after this break. Is the Catholic Church the Antichrist? Yes, ma'am. Why may me say that? Because them change every something and turn everything upside down. Yes, ma'am. So the Antichrist is true. Because you told them say Christ, Christ signify our mean, you know? They don't live up to the expectation there. Because if I know it's the woman's social, there's nothing at them place there. Them about kids which I don't think Christ agree with. So, you know. That way they miss them Antichrist. Well, we can't really say that still because <coughs> we don't know who is the Antichrist, what I would say. But in some ways, based on, based on their, um, their ways that they, they do things, I would say that they are Antichrist. No, I wouldn't say so, <laughs> no. Because, well, their message doesn't say that to me. I would say yes, because they're not living up to what... Look, I... A whole lot of them now in, um, in a church, right? And you don't see a woman around them and all uh, them little things there. So if, if the appearance was like them, the whole population would, would down. So why them don't have a woman married to them? You know? Yeah, man. So them, them are the Antichrist, man. Not to my knowing. Not to my knowledge. Seventh-day Adventist layman David Mole continues to make his case against Catholicism. Roman Catholic deacon Peter S. Pute is here to point out his fallacious reasoning. You were going on to make the point, uh, David, on uh, Lincoln's assassination. Uh, I'm actually going to do a documentary on the subject, you see. And I'm going to tell you where I would begin. I'm going to pick up back with Lincoln. Yes. But I would begin that documentary in the cellar of the British Parliament in the year 1605. And I say this because Peter is, he has some questions about my sources. He has never heard this stuff before. Yes, yes. So I'll point, he's at a I'll point so him to Britannica Encyclopedia, which I believe he has heard of. All right? 1605, the British government foiled a plot attempting to blow up the British Parliament with King James inside. Uh -huh. All right? Um, this is called the Guy Fawkes plot. Every year, November 5th, yes. they have this, 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 this gunpowder plot. They have this celebration in Britain. And I rather suspect that if you ask many in Britain what it's all about, they know about the fireworks, but they don't understand that it was a Jesuit-led plot oh. to blow up the British Parliament. A Jesuit-led plot? The British, when they caught in the cellar of Parliament, uh -huh. Guy Fawkes, uh -huh. sitting on 36 barrels of gunpowder, they tortured him. They didn't play games. 
and Fox spilled the beans and they went out and captured the others. At the heart of that conspiracy was the Jesuit superior for all of England, Father Henry Garnett. The conspirators were tried and executed. And I must say, the British didn't play games. They put them on four horses and quartered them. I, I hope to God they were dead by that time, you know, and didn't impose that, side of, that sort of torture. But the lesson coming out of that, the laws that were passed in Britain after that event, you know, are something that I will bring to Jamaica. I promise you, God sparing my life, I will bring it. I would begin my talk on Lincoln by taking you to Britain, uh -huh. to her parliament, and to the Jesuit attempt to blow it to pieces uh -huh. in the hope of bringing in this back to England Catholicism, okay? Lincoln mm -hmm. wasn't the only one targeted that night. Ah. Secretary of State That's Seward right. was right. at home in his bed, yes. had fallen off a Precise. horse, had a neck brace Doris on. Doris Kearns, All right? in her latest book on, um, on Lincoln, mentions All right. that. Had that neck brace on. You're the right. assassin Powell You're right. stabbed repeatedly Precisely. while John Wilkes Booth is Ab blowing out the brains of President right. Lincoln. He's stabbing, not realizing there is this metal brace absolutely on, which right. is saving Secretary of State Seward's life. Doris Kearns right. writes about this. George Atzerodt mm -hmm. got drunk. He was assigned to kill the vice president. Mm -hmm. He got drunk and lost his nerve. Mm -hmm. All right? And, um, and the other one was assigned to kill, I think it was Ulysses Grant. But the only one who died that night was Lincoln. Once again, you have a plot of Jesuitical dimensions. And by the way, lest you think I'm being biased, mm -hmm. we can thank the Jesuits for the introduction of that word Jesuitical in the British lexicon. You go to your dictionary and well, look it up. They didn't introduce it. It is there. It they is there, but you can it. thank the Jesuits. Uh -huh. Enough people knew about the Jesuit order and what it was about. When I developed this... I don't this, think they would have put it in there. It's not complimentary to them. But so obviously, it's not accurate obviously. to say that we, that we thank them for the mm -hmm. word. I thank whomever yes. put that in the English. Ah, the, 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 the bottom line is, the bottom line is, let's go back to Lincoln now. Yes. All right. What Guy Fawkes tells you is the length to which oh, Catholicism oh. will go in her counter-reformation. So it's not isolated then? No. The scope of the Lincoln assassination tells you how far the Roman Catholic Church we'll go. will go. Okay? When Surratt was caught, uh -huh. Secretary of State Seward demanded an extradition, uh -huh. even though there was no extradition treaty. treaty. And you can hear it at our website, www.lrltv.org. Click till you find it. Click okay. on Lincoln. Uh -huh. it's the, you, know, we, we, you, you can hear that. It's not actually him, yes, but we yes. hired somebody, right. you know, taking the words of the transcript of the trial. Surat escaped. Escaped. Oh. Or was allowed to escape. Oh. When the State Department finally caught him, he was caught not in Rome. They discovered him in Rome, mm -hmm. in the Pope's bodyguards, as you call it. Mm -hmm. All right? But he, when the, the, the demand that he be sent back to the United States yes. of America hit, all of a sudden, Surat manages to get away from the papal army, oh. or the papal whomever was holding him. Uh -huh. He flees to Alexandria, Egypt. Uh -huh where the United States government holds him, brings him back to the United States. Uh -huh. By then, the military tribunal on which Brigadier General Thomas Harris sat had been disbanded. Uh -huh. uh, they didn't play games. The military executed four. The first woman executed by the United States government, as far as I know. Mary Surratt, John Surratt's mother, you know, the church came out saying this poor little lady didn't know anything. She knew about the guns. She knew the escape route. She knew where the weapons were. The plot was hatched in her boarding house. And it's a historical fact that most of the conspirators were Roman Catholic, including, the, I think it was so grandfather. The mother was Roman Catholic, the, the was Roman Catholic Roman and, and, and the Americans killed her, executed her for her role. You know, you had Dr. Samuel Mudd, who set the leg of John Wilkes Booth, whom I believe was a grandfather of a famous commentator in the United States. But anyway. Um, brought him back, uh -huh. the military tribunal had disbanded, so he was given a civil trial. And in Harris's major work, which I will bring to Jamaica and talk about on a subsequent program, he details the support of Georgetown University, which is a Catholic university. Uh -huh. First of all, the attempt to rig the jury pool. There were some 20 odd Roman Catholics in the jury pool. And remember, all you needed was one for a hung jury. <laughs> All you needed was one. This is American history, like it or not, uh -huh. okay? Uh -huh. The guy got off on a technicality. The same evidence that convicted the others and sent them to the gallows was presented before the 
the, the civil oh. authority, the court, but they functioned at a different standard. And if you had one, you had a hung jury. And there were enough Catholics placed on that jury to make sure that John Surratt would never be executed. This, in my view, is the story of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. And it ought not to be seen as an isolated act, but again, a measure of how far Rome will go. And will still go? Because Peter will say that's a pass. Listen. Rome I still mean, has those intentions? I mean, to say... Uh, what do you expect? I, I'm listening, I'm listening, and... You know, I've never heard these stories before. Yes. I didn't write American history. No. Um, in fact, I hate I've history. read American history. Never. I've read the story of the assassination. These are suppressed things in but American history. Probably so. And um, I wonder why. Because America is not a Catholic country. I mean, it has had one Catholic president so far. That you know was, of. And he was assassinated. <laughs> um, there are conspiracy theories about that as well. <laughs> I mean, to say, I'll go and look and see if any Adventists, Adventists were involved. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, the, 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 fa the fact is, the fact is that that um, w when we um, bring children into the church and adults into the church, um, you know, world domination is not is not oh. our, 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 our our gospel. In fact, in Jamaica, we are eight percent and falling. Um, it's it's we we have no intention of dominating the, the, the you Jamaica. You 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 rule by by duplicity. That you are presenting yourself now as uh, this uh, modern, uh, open, democratic organization, right. but when in fact you are not. Yes. Well, I mean to say, we, we you know we, we have our own. We, the, the 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 Catholic Church is a modern organization. The authority, the form of authority, is is still monarchical. Yes. Yes. The, I mean, the Pope believe is, in is democratic society values for yes, the society. But but the church itself. That's right. Chooses um, a, a autocracy, uh, as autocracy as the, as the way to go. <laughs> um, the the but the church is is holy. I'm going to make you come back to you, um, uh, Peter. <coughs> Peter Espute defending the Roman Catholic Church against some pretty strong charges made here today by Seventh Day Adventist layman David Maul. We have more. Peter Espute will take up the story when we come back. Should Christians criticize other churches? No, they shouldn't criticize other denominations because we are all praising one God. So if you are praising one God, how you know what you believe is right? So make everybody live and just praise the God where you are praised. It's not right for a church to criticize the next church. If you are a Christian, we are all one. So how can we criticize other churches? One great man said, separate as the fingers, but united as the hand. That's what we should be if we are Christians. No, because they should be serving this one God. So oh, 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 you could come to one consensus and, being criti and criticize each other and the same one God concept. Well, it's one God. And if them say everybody are Christian, are just one God, so I don't see why this one should have criticized this one, because the whole of them say, oh, Father, this is what I say. There's a scripture in the Bible that says that um, we are going to judge the world. We'll also be judging angels. So if you look at it from that point of view, um, the church should, should be in a position to judge its own matters. It should need to go to the world, really. Leave our criticism to the Lord. I don't think that Christians should criticize other churches because uh, each is entitled to his own and belief and if you are praising God and one God it shouldn't be a difference. Basically one person you would be what you call it serving yeah so I don't see why they should um, criticize. If it's necessary you know if there is it no church is perfect. Welcome to the final segment of Religious Hard Talk, heard on RGR 94 FM every Sunday evening at 5.15 and on TVJ on Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Peter, is this the essential mm. Roman Catholic Church no, that no David Ian. Mould is describing? No, Ian. Let us, let, us, let us say quite categorically that, of course, this is the first time I'm hearing these yes, allegations. Yes, we understand that. We and understand. so I'm not in a position You can't to respond to the specifics. We I understand that. I can't. And um, having heard them today, I'll certainly do some research, okay. so maybe I'll come back. But certainly some of the assertions made are not so. 
Justinian did not make the Pope head of the church. That, that is simply not so. Um, Going back to the yeah. Emperor Justinian yeah. was Emperor of Rome in 527, mm -hmm. from 527 to 565. The um, Bishop of Rome has been the head of the church at least 200 years before that. At the Council of Nicaea in 325, um, the, at the end of it, the, um, the cry was that Leo has spoken, sorry, uh, Peter has spoken through Leo, Leo being the, the Pope at the time, and um, Leo being the, uh, the, the, in, the, who inherited the chair of Peter. Would would um would, would, you know so so the, the the claim from 325, which mm -hmm. is fully 200 years yep. uh, uh, before Justinian, yes. um the, the the Bishop of Rome was head of the ah, church. That's a minor so point. For, that, no, that but you know, but you know, Ian, when I prove a point, you say it's minor. No, but, but when he makes a point, no, it's major. No, I'm not saying it's major. The fact but of I, the what matter what is, what I'm saying, em, he's the making a case that your theology, yes. that your theology is one that predisposes you our to totalitarianism. Our theology you does need to not respond to that. about the, the, um, the ne necessary joining together of church and state. Not necessarily I joining not together. No, but, but, but do you I believe do that the church I have studied has a theology. right to build the kingdom of God? Class, does the church in theology. Yes. And I have never come across that assertion. Does the church hold the view that it has a responsibility to build the kingdom of God? Yes. Jesus and, came and, and said and does they believe in that, that true political every time power? you pray, you pray, yes. thy kingdom come. Uh -huh. And this year we've been reading in, in, our, in our Sunday services the gospel um, of, Mark, of, of Matthew, mm -hmm. which is very, in very many ways the gospel of the kingdom. And the kingdom of God is what we are here to build. Yes, to build. the kingdom of God. Using political no, power, political not action? not at all. Not using not political at all. Oh. Not at all. The kingdom that Jesus um, wants has like the values of the Beatitudes. Of values. And, and, and um, it is, however, you know, there is going to be a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. That new earth will, is the kingdom that, that we expect. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, 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 the church's understanding of this kingdom has not always been the same. There was a oh. time, for example, when the church believed that the kingdom was in fact in heaven. And therefore, there was nothing on this world. It was mm -hmm. all the next world. Mm -hmm. But that, that view is no longer held. And you see, again, when, when the gentleman will quote a document from the year, um, what year did he just quote? Um, so 1302, mm -hmm. you know. The, 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 the teachings of the Catholic Church, the, the, we, we, we speak of infallible teaching, which cannot change because it is held to be infallibly true. And then there is dogma, the, 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 the profound teaching of the church, which is held to be always true and is passed on from generation to generation. And then there is something called doctrine. And doctrine is, is, is te it's teaching, it's taught, but the doctrine of the church is not as firmly um, held to be absolutely so as dogma. So, for example, the, a dogma is, for example, that we believe that Jesus said, this is my body, this is my blood. The bread and the wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. That's a dogma. But then you seek for a way to explain how this happens. And so um, St. Thomas Aquinas came up with this um, explanation called transubstantiation. Now, transubstantiation is not a dogma. It is a doctrine. It is an explanation of how the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. But Catholics are not required to believe transubstantiation. Catholics are required to believe uh, the fact that what, what we call the real presence. And since then, we've had transformalization and transsignification, which are other theological explanations of how the bread and wine becomes the body and blood of Christ. Now, um, over the centuries, <coughs> theology, doctrine, has changed substantially, but not dogma, not the, the kernel of the faith, which cannot change. Mm -hmm. and this, but this brother here seems to, to believe that anything that the church has said at any time over the last 2,000 years that the church has been around, that the church still believes everything that it but has David, said. David, you say this we still have so. much to fear from the Roman Catholic Church. Most definitely. And when he says that he has never 
I mean, the worldview of Catholicism, I think, was put forth eloquently by uh, former Jesuit priest Malachi Martin, whose book, The Keys of This Blood. Malachi Martin is no flake. This is a man who worked on the inside of and the this Vatican. This is the Murray Monk thing. Malachi Martin was the gentleman, according to U.S. News and World Report, yeah, who first work. broke the story of the three-way hotline between Gorbachev, Reagan, mm. and the Pope. U.S. News and World Report. Mm. Malachi Martin. He work. writes the book, The Keys of This Blood. Yes. And the thesis of the book, and let me tell you, when a Jesuit speaks or writes, listen. Mm -hmm. I listen. I don't take them lightly. Yes. And when he tells you that the aim of the pontificate of John Paul II uh -huh. and the church was to do away with the system of politics that we have. Uh -huh. Okay? To just, to do, I, I wish I had it in front of me, I would read it. It is at our website. Go there, lrltv.org, uh -huh. and read it for yourself, what Malachi Martin said is the aim of the papacy. For him to say he's unaware of this. In fact, I can show you one pope, uh -huh. one pope who made the statement, Pius X, November 9th, 1903, a little more recently. Yes. We shall offend many people, and apparently including Catholics. We shall offend many people in saying we, that is the Church of Rome, must of necessity concern ourselves with politics. Uh -huh. Yes. But whoever judges the question fairly must recognize that the sovereign pontiff invested by God with the supreme magistracy and that is the concept coming out of the Middle Ages that we need to deal with. Uh, this claim, so the Middle Ages can't be still you in the Catholic Church by the Roman Catholic Church in that sentence. God has given it the right to rule. Uh, uh. And that God has uh, magistracy is not to rule; it is to judge. Invested Magister, by God, with magistrate. Do not Finish. translate it incorrectly. Invested by God with the supreme magistracy has not the right to separate political matters from the domain uh. of faith and morals. Unum Sanctum in 1302 brought forth the concept of the two swords and the unicity of the unity of the Roman Catholic Church. Uh. This business of supreme magistracy, okay, which is we're finding echoed by this pope in 1903. There's no you doubt that the Catholic Church we have run puts out it, of puts itself forward. Last words, yes. Puts itself forward as being the arbiter of faith and morals. Mm -hmm. Morals concerning human behavior. About using political power. Not about using political power. Now where he makes his error is he translates magistracy to mean All right, we're not, we're political power. Yes. Whereas magistracy means well, to judge. You, that's what your Pope said. It means to judge. To judge. Magister uh -huh. in Latin. You need to learn right, some not, Latin. We're not going to, uh, no, semantics. but if you can't mistranslate something All right. and, and, and malign the we church have and lie the church. We have to go. David Mole, longtime critic of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, uh, Seventh-day Adventist layman, has faced Peter Espute, Roman Catholic deacon, defender of the faith. Mole says he will buy time on this station to prove his view that the Roman Catholic Church is the epitome of evil, that, that, that it has been behind a number of plots to assassinate leaders to blow up parliaments on religious hard talk we present you with the various views which are out there you are the jury you make up your minds until next week ian boyne on behalf of my production assistant tracy and ling wishing you a very pleasant day Well, there you have it. I hope that whetted your appetite. We're actually working on a documentary. Uh, we want to raise the necessary funds to produce. It's probably going to cost us around $250,000 to put together a decent documentary on the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, which will involve taking cameras all over the place. Certainly Ford's Theatre, where the assassination occurred. Burlington, Vermont, to which John Surratt fled on the night of the assassination. Uh, Liverpool, where he was sheltered in the oratory of the Holy Cross, and of course, Velitere, and not the least, Alexandria, Egypt, where he was finally caught. To do all this is going to require a pretty penny. Um, if you liked what you've heard and you want to assist us, 
We are laymen for Religious Liberty Ministries. You can make a check payable to us. Our address, Post Office Box 908, D-Land, Florida, 32721. You may reach us toll free if you're living in the United States or Canada at the following number, 866-252-9636. If you're outside of the US and Canada, our number is 386 740 nine two five three hope you enjoyed it i'd love to do more god bless you